Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So we had a pretty cool mission last night. It was a warbird mission. We shot down some Hercs and had some fun and it was cool and some awesome uh, visuals as well. But we had a couple of weird things happen. Um, two uh, Spitfires broke up in midair and um, we didn't really understand why. So it's time to look into it, like any crash investigation, I suppose, to make sure it doesn't happen again. Or we'll try and understand why it happened and to make sure it doesn't happen again. So Rage here... Uh, exploded in midair and so did me cap uh, so we had some special conditions on it was pretty cold for, for our first thing and our pedo heat uh, our pedo tubes kept freezing and so we kept losing our our indication of speed so that's one thing that will probably play into it secondly there was a massive low cloud layer and this caused huge problems for all of the pilots we kept diving down into the cloud losing situational awareness because we're not really used to these planes we don't fly them much and um, and uh, basically losing control of our planes. However, all of those things, still I don't see any reason why uh, our plane should have disintegrated. I didn't realise there was a dam damage model with the Spitfire um, in which you can put the aircraft at a certain point where the wings will snap off. Apparently there is. There must be have been what it is. Uh, so we're going to try and investigate what. So let's look at Rage first of all. Let's we may need to run through this a couple of times we've got he's diving down now he's at 3000 asl so he's in the clouds now so he's probably lost all situational awareness he's probably got frozen pedo tubes so he does probably doesn't know where speed is going and his speed is absolutely massive it's true 360 knots that's 410 miles an hour true um and probably nearly 500 miles an hour indicated um or is it the other way around no it's the other way around so about 360 miles per hour indicated, something like that. Either way, it's bloody fast, probably past the max speed. I'm not sure what the max speed of a spit is, but probably past it. However, just going fast shouldn't, um, just going in a straight line fast shouldn't really cause an airframe any problems. You're not really putting it under a massive amount of stress. Uh, let's look at the G force. There is the G. He's building G, so he's pulling up a little bit. Um, but 1G, you know, that's that's gravity pretty much. So, again, not putting the airframe under any stress there. Speed is still rising. We're true 380 knots true now. That's pretty fast. Uh, ah, we've got indicated there. Pretty much calculated as, I believe, very near. No, scratch that. That's wrong. I'm not sure what the indicated is. It's 390 true now. So that's really fast now. So 392 must be 440 miles per hour. So it's right at the top of the speedo of the spit. He's just come out through the clouds now and is facing. He probably lost situational awareness coming through the clouds. He didn't. I had no idea he was coming through so fast. Suddenly he's faced with the the ocean because he's just come out the bottom of the clouds at 1500 ASL. And I'm guessing it's going to put like a pull back on the. Oh right, yeah, it's loading the G up. You can see the G loading up there. 4G is got. You notice how it's sticking at uh, 4G, that means it's probably bugged, which m probably means it's above 4G now. And he's backsticking, ah, and you just saw we backstick there. Let's just try that again, it's kind of hard to get. Do you just watch the plane? I, don't, I think the G there is bugged, it's reading 4, it must be maxing out 4 for some reason. But let's try and look at his control input. Mm, it's really hard to tell. I get the feeling, I mean, you can tell as a pilot, you know, he's at a thousand feet there or less and heading to the ground at kind of Mach 0.6 or something at 450 miles per hour. He's going to be pulling back on the stick and I think that's what overloaded it. So I didn't know that was a thing, but it's obviously a thing. So that's a little bit of information. Next, let's go and look at me. Um, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. My PO heat is... Uh, uh, jammed up, so I frozen up, so I'm not getting a, a speed reading. So it's reading about 100 miles per hour, per hour or something. In fact, I'm doing nearly 300 knots true, which is a lot, but I wouldn't have thought enough to rip some wings off a spit. So I'm heading into the clouds in here, trying to avoid Sea Thor's gunfire. Speeding up, okay, with 310 true, 320 true. Ah, oh, look at the G. I had no idea I was pulling these big Gs here. 7.2 G in a spit. Yeah, that's that's overloading. That's, that's blacking my pilot out at that point. 
So it just shows how you can lose, as soon as you lose um, your visual, you just have lost my situational awareness completely. I had no idea I was pulling so hard back on the stick here. Uh, and I'm going to come belting through this cloud at a massive G and a massive speed by the looks of it. Or not. No, I'm going back up. I'm loading off the G. Still speeding up. Okay, when do I actually blow up? Let's speed that up. See when I actually blow up. So I'm going up again now. There. Right there. Interesting. So let's go back. Let's see if we can analyse that on the moment before death. Right, so you could argue the airframe's slightly weakened because we've taken rounds, but I don't know if that's actually a model or not yet. So we'll treat it as a healthy airframe. Let's run that through. So I'm 270 not true that's not particularly fast that's within a bit if i can fly that level pretty much g is 3.3 .3 and oh now you see the g force was just like um rages it was stuck on 3.3 .3, so i'm getting the feeling that that is bugged in tack view for some reason look at that again so g here is 1.8 running through 1.5 3 and it stops increasing there at that point and I'm guessing that is tack view being bugged I'm guessing in reality I'm actually loading up more and more G back stick there you see I'm pulling back and it blows up and this, I've not got a lot of data to work with here I mean I don't know what G I was doing when I blew up and the speed was low so roll over here. Come on. So that's 300 knots true. So I died at just under 300 knots true and an unknown G force. So there's a big difference to the 400 knots or nearly 400 knots of rage there. Okay. So what we need. So what we've learned here is that the wings do fall off if you pull a certain G force at a certain speed. Whether it has to be in a dive or not, I'm not sure, but I doubt it. Physics would suggest that the same should affect us whether we're going up or down or left or right or whatever. Uh, so the thing to do now is jump in a cockpit, I think, of a Spitfire, put it in a dive to get some speed up. Um, once we're at a certain speed, we'll pull the stick back and see at what speed it takes to, to pull our wings off. And at some point, we'll reach a certain speed. The only thing that's bugging me slightly is that my Spitfire was at 300 knots true and his Spitfire was 370 or something, a lot higher. So that does bug me a bit. Um, right, so let's jump in the plane and see what happens. Stand by. Right, so now that we're in the bird, let's start doing some testing. So first of all, we're going to put it in a dive, and we're going to try 360 miles per hour here, uh, which must be about 320 knots thereabouts. And uh, we'll do a sudden jerk, pull back on the stick, and see if we can get the wings to snap. So... Twenty, three forty, three sixty. Pull, and my wings look good. So let's try again at three hundred and eighty miles per hour. Three Three sixty, three eighty. Wings are fine. Let's try four hundred. Right, so four hundred will be about four hundred miles now. Will be about three hundred and fifty knots IAS. Let's give that a go. Three eighty four hundred and let's try that. Aha! Stop. Right, so just a smidgen under four hundred miles per hour IAS or about three hundred and forty knots IAS. 
uh, pullback on the stick, induce some G, uh, some stress on the wings, and that is our wings gone. Right, so that's the mystery solved there. So the only interesting thing is, on the replay that we saw just now of me snapping my wings off yesterday, last night, I was only going 300 knots true, and I pulled back on my stick, and or less than 300 knots, I think it was true, and I pulled back on my stick and I snapped my wings off there, but we've shown here that you need to be uh, just nearly 400, uh, nearly 350 knots true to get the wings to snap, so I don't know, uh, sorry, uh, indicated. So I don't know if anyone can um, work out why there is a difference there. Maybe it's because I was at altitude. Maybe that true, uh, that reading of 300 true from last night would have equated to a higher IAS. I don't know. Uh, but in summary, you can snap the wings off a Spitfire. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I don't think if you're going in a dive or if you're going level, but it's just the speed. If you're getting near 400 miles per hour, you simply can't pull back on the, st on the stick very hard. Otherwise, you're going to snap your wings off. Lesson learnt. I hope it helps my guys and anyone else, and we'll see you later.